can't answer these questions that I'll be sharing with you today, then I'm pretty sure I don't have a story. But like I always say, <laughs> what I share here on my channel is not prescriptive. Use what works for you and discard what doesn't. Here's our game plan. I spent some time digging up golden questions from some of the best screenwriting resources out there. And I'll share those with you in a second. But before I do, I think the way that we will all get the most from this video is by listening to each question when it's presented and then pausing straight afterwards and then answering that question with our first gut instinct. The reason I'm encouraging you to go with your gut is because you guys have mentioned you only have an hour to commit to this activity. Some of you have less time. So a gut instinct is usually a good place to start according to Blink. <laughs> But if you have more time, I encourage you to rewatch this video again. And I often find that if I spend more time thinking of alternative options, it can often give me more variety, I guess, to choose from when it comes to putting the story together. And options for one answer to the question, it may not seem completely relevant at that time, but later when you find things aren't working, and that there might be a problem earlier on if you had a whole bunch of options it feels less intimidating to rework that section and yeah i don't want to <laughs> um, maybe burst anyone's bubble here but at least when i write i often go and finish the entire screenplay and then i only realize all the problems and i always find that i have to go back and rework something so for me at least it helps having options so if you have the time to come up with alternatives or at least alternative answers to some of the questions, go for it. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the first question and you guys are in for a treat. I've got an expert on standby who is going to present the first two questions. And these are so helpful in terms of getting that 30 foot view, that perspective of why you're writing this story and what hopefully your story is going to bring to the audience that is going to watch it. What would you say are some questions that we could ask to find the deeper meaning of the story that we're trying to tell or just for us to get a better understanding of what we're trying to write? Well, I think you have to sort of come at it from two directions, right? And they're both important, but I think they're more important together that you, that you think of both of these angles. So as a writer, what makes the story meaningful to you, right? What does it mean to you? What's the deeper reason to tell the story? What are you trying to impart to other people on sort of like a emotional or philosophical, you know, life lesson <laughs> kind of way? And then the other direction to come at it is as a filmmaker, what makes this movie exciting or appealing to you, right? And there's tons of questions and decisions that branch off from those two things. But those are the two directions I think that you have to be able to kind of see the big picture from, which is like as, you know, it's sort of like internal, external. As a writer, what's my purpose? What am I pouring into this story? Why tell this story? And then almost from like the external side, as a filmmaker, if this is a movie that I want to see on the big screen, what makes it a movie? What makes it exciting? What makes it interesting? What makes it entertaining? Why is this a movie that other people will want to see? So that was a snippet from a longer interview that I did with Naomi Beatty that is going to come out next month. So subscribe if you'd like to be aware when that video comes out. But like Naomi said, there are questions that branch off from that. And we're going to dive into some of those questions now. What is the protagonist's goal? What is stopping her from achieving the goal? The scary thing is that I often feel I have an answer to this question, but if I'm honest, I can get lazy and often think that there are more obstacles that are getting in the way of my character achieving her goal than there actually is. So I'm going to give you an example of a film that does this beautifully. We're going to look at Legally Blonde. Now her goal is to win back her ex. What is stopping her is that she has to be seen as serious and because of that she needs to get into law school. However, getting into law school isn't enough because her next obstacle is her ex's fiance, as well as her professors who burst her happy pink bubble by revealing how unfit she actually is to be attending law school. But because of that, she starts to get smart and gets really good at law school. In her pursuit of chasing her original goal of getting back with her ex, she is confronted with conflict that grows her as a person. We see her goals change from chasing a man to wanting to bring justice to someone who is innocent, but who has been put into jail because she is wrongly accused. As she perseveres through everything that stops her from achieving her original goal, she grows and changes to the point where her goal changes. Do you remember when we spent those four amazing hours in the hot tub after winter formal? Yeah, no. 
This is so much better than that. However, all this change occurs as a result of first knowing what her goal is and what is stopping her from achieving it. This note is as much for me as it is perhaps for some of you. The more obstacles that are put in the way or at least get in the way of the protagonist achieving a goal, the easier it seems for the story to flow as a result of all of the natural conflict that occurs. And because the character works through various degrees of obstacles, we see change. And as a result of this change, we see the character either achieve their goal, miss their goal, or change their goal. So now that you know the goal, as well as some obstacles that get in the way, we'll turn to some epic insight I learned from Save the Cat. And that is to identify six things that need fixing. Here you need to identify six things that are missing from the character's life. And if there's one thing that the book makes clear, it's that you need to show six things that are missing from the character's life. Not tell them, <laughs> you have to show them. So these can be physical or emotional things that the character is going to eventually be crippled by. And then as they work through these six things, we will see the character hopefully, maybe, <laughs> come out victoriously at the end of the film. The example they use in the book is big, where the protagonist has to be a certain height to go on a ride. I'll use the proposal as an example. Here we look at what Margaret is missing. She is missing a real connection because she struggles with interpersonal relationships. She's uptight and therefore she misses the joys of spontaneity. And she's so consumed with work that she has no balance. So those are three ideas of what I think Margaret is missing if I look at her character arc. But I think you get the gist of what we're going to do here. So go ahead and jot down the six things that need fixing in your protagonist's life or journey. Building on from the six things that need fixing, we're now going to brainstorm elements that are taking a toll on the character due to the forces that are put in their path that are stopping them from achieving their goal. I'm going to use Eat, Pray, Love as an example to illustrate some of these effects. So we look at the Julia Roberts character at the start of the film where she seems to go from one unhappy relationship into the next. We see her pause, her craving for adventure. We see her mold into a woman that is required for the relationship that she's in. And she comes across as painfully lonely and trapped because she's sacrificing who she is for someone else. Then later in the film, as a result of her past experience with love, we see her self-destruct when she meets someone who accepts her for who she is and wants to love her for that version of herself. We see her close up almost in fear that this man is going to steal her freedom. Where he contributes to love and connection, she seems to push him away only because of the toll that her past experiences have put on her. This is an example of all of the internal conflict that the Julia Roberts character has to wrestle with because we see how the demons of her past are blocking her from living a truly fulfilled life. So if you're free to brainstorm some of the effects that are taking a toll on your protagonist as a result of all of these forces that are getting in the way of them achieving their goal. Next, we're going to focus on identifying the main relationship. Now, I don't know about you, but I find that I am so drawn to stories where I am tracking a relationship that's evolving. Examples are iRobot, where we see a relationship between Will Smith and the robot. I see you remain suspicious of me, Detective. Eh, well, you know what they say about old dogs. I had hoped you would come to think of me as your friend. At first, Will Smith is skeptical, but in the end, a real friendship develops. Again, in the proposal, we see a relationship develop between the Sandra Bullock character and the Ryan Reynolds character. In Good Will Hunting, we track the relationship between Matt Damon's character and Robin Williams' character and this relationship literally melts my heart. Whether it's familial, romantic, or even friendship, I find that the main relationship is often the heart of the story. Everything else is either interesting or entertaining, and to me at least. I mean, I find that a well-crafted main relationship brings you to a point in a story that either makes you cry or leaves you feeling feelings for days after you watch the film and you sort of just reflecting about how this person did that or why that happened or it, it all comes back to the main relationship for me. Now ask yourself how does your plot and your protagonist connect? This is probably my biggest weakness and one of my many weaknesses but I often get so excited about a certain plot point. That, that's how ideas come to me a lot of the times. I'll just think, wow, wouldn't that be cool to have 
this happen at the end of the movie and oh if, if a character kind of went through this in the middle man that would be so much fun to see and i've got these plot features but then i struggle to find a character that actually fits what the story requires so that could be bad because i often end up jamming characters into situations that just aren't right don't get me wrong it's okay to be excited about plot points but you might just have to be patient waiting for the right character to come along to fulfill the plot and so that it all just makes sense and similarly you could be on the other side where you have a character and you are wanting to write a story about this character but you are struggling for certain situations to make the story a bit more interesting again you just have to be patient either way <laughs> but i'm hoping that all of the previous questions that we've answered will get you to a point where you can look at your character as well as some of your plot elements and ask yourself whether it is truthful or whether it feels forced. Working through these questions allowed me to get a deep understanding of why I'm writing my story, as well as what I hope the audience will enjoy about the story that I'm working on. It also shed light on what my protagonist's goal is, as well as these questions giving me a deep understanding of the obstacle my protagonist has to overcome in order to achieve her goal. If you found these questions valuable, then I do have another video that lists 13 other props that you might enjoy doing next. So I'll link that video for you in the description as well as in the end screen. But let me know how it went today in the comments. And I'm excited for the next video because I'll be introducing our next topic as we continue in this journey of trying to write a screenplay in 30 days. Trust me, after today, you'll be more than ready to approach what's coming up next. So see you guys soon. Bye.